I came across this um, post on Grant Stockley's forum, which I, I thought I'd share with you because it's got some quite interesting things in it. Um, apparently, someone asked him to check the clock on their Altair, and he's done this little post here. It's got some quite useful information in it. Um, we'll just go down a bit. Now, the, the clock circuit, well, this is the Intel notes he's got in the middle here, consists of uh, there's there's two components of the clock. There's what they call phase two and phase one. And the, the important bits, as far as we're concerned, are T01, which needs to have a minimum of 60 nanoseconds, T02, uh, which has to have a minimum of 220 nanoseconds and the other critical bit is TD2 which is the gap between the falling edge of phase 2 and the rising edge of phase 1 and TD2 is a minimum of 70 nanoseconds. Now uh, the, <laughs> this little chart here don't get confused by these um, minus 1s and minus 2s I couldn't figure out what they were but they're actually uh, referring to different versions of the 8080 there were actually some faster versions um, which I haven't got, I've actually got the A so we're, we're looking, we're in this column here and if we scroll down a bit he's got, got a sort of a before and after view here uh, this is his, his before view and if you note there's a very very small gap between the, the falling edge of um, phase 2 and the rising edge of phase 1 and th this is quite wide it's probably I'm guessing the width that that's 250 maybe maybe even 280 nanoseconds and the, the after view if we scroll down it, it is quite a marked difference now you see he shortened this pulse phase 2 and now we've got quite a bit of daylight between the falling edge of phase 2 and the rising edge of phase 1 uh, which is is much more in keeping with um, Intel spec you can see this is this is definitely narrower that probably is probably is quite close to 220 nanoseconds now and um, certainly the, uh, this gap between the two edges I think is fairly critical um, so uh, let, let's have a look at the actual circuit and see how he did it. Um, a sec. Right, here's the clock circuit. Um, so what Grant did, the, um, this, the, it's all about this, the 74123IC um, in here. And this piece of it is uh, responsible for phase two and this half is responsible for phase one so in Grant's particular case he reduced uh, this resistor here to 4.3k I think I'll just scroll down and have another look but I think that was the value um, so that, 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 that's how he did it now I, I had a look at my one out of interest just to see what was going on um, let me just find the picture of it Right, this is this is after I've actually tuned it a bit. Unfortunately, my oscilloscope's a little bit out of whack. Um, but before I touched it, these these two edges—that's the falling edge of phase two and that's the rising edge of phase one—were virtually touching each other. And also, the the, the rise rise and fall times were very slow. Uh, so what I did, I changed the. 74123 for a 74LS123 and that sharpened the edges considerably as you can see here <laughs> the only snag was it sharpened them so much that this gap became virtually non-existent uh, and at which point it, um, it actually stopped working <laughs> so um, what I've done in, in this, this particular um, instance I've changed uh, I've changed the two resistors. Let's just have a look. Go back to here. Um, right. So what on mine? I've changed R42, which is responsible for phase two. I've changed that to 4.7k, and I've also shortened phase one, 
which is R41, and I've changed that for 7.5k. It was a 13k. It's really difficult to read on there. There's a little tiny little dash there. <laughs> that's the one. So that's what I've done on mine. And so this this is um, this is the result, and I'm fairly happy with it. It's unfortunate that this scopes out of calibration. I can't really tell you what these these widths are, but I'm guessing they're more or less right. At some point, I'm going to have to recalibrate the scope and really check it properly. Um, the one of the problems with with this this particular IC that they they've used this 74123 and the LS123 for that matter is is the the delays that it creates um, are actually temperature dependent and this <laughs> this, this, this is what's caused um, people problems over the years as the temperature change obviously the pulse width could change and if you were near the limit it you know basically your system just stops working apparently MITs came in for a fair bit of criticism at the time and the design of the circuit and you know looking at you <laughs> you can probably see why um, I guess some people were saying well you know why why is it wrong um, and you know, why are the why are the values not right um, it's likely um, that the, the time that they produce the Altair um, the, the, the capacitors here uh, the, the C5 and C4, the the tolerance at, the, at you know that point in time on capacitors wasn't good, uh, and it's highly likely that these capacitors were much smaller uh, than the, the marking on the case. Um, so that's probably why these larger values worked. And now, of course, we've got um, capacitors that are much better tolerance. Uh, and a uh, you know, bigger in value, they're, well, sorry, they're closer to the value they should be, and of course they're producing the wrong length pulses. So uh, that that's probably what caused the problem. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, you might be saying, well, are there any other solutions? You know, well, yes, there are. Um, let's just have another look, look at one of these. Uh, there's one that a guy has mod modified here. And he's used the proper Intel 8224 clock generator, and he's you know there's a collection of components on here that that work with the 8224, and the, you can see the crystal is actually soldered onto that header. Um, it looks like a very neat mod he's done here, but I think probably that well that probably belies what he's done underneath. Uh, there's probably a lot of links under here that we can't see. He he hasn't documented this mod unfortunately. However, uh, many many moons ago, um, there was a, some an entry in the MITS notes thing. Let's just see if I can find that of this guy here who fully documented the modification. Uh, <laughs> and he, he does look a bit of a mess. Uh, he, here he's he's showing where, where he chopped all the chopped through all the tracks, and he sort of scrolled down. It, you know, this <laughs> this is where he chopped it on the other side. And now he's starting to put jumpers in. You can see all these these, these jumpers he's put in. Uh, yeah, and there's there's this one one set there on the back, another set on the front. Uh, I think do, can we see the? No, no, we can't see the completed. Or I think that that is the completed uh, job there. And as you can see, he, he's taken uh, quite a few components out and put all these links all over the place and and cut tracks. So I, I don't think I'd really fancy that idea. <laughs> So, um, what I might, what I quite fancy doing is um, try try to replicate what this guy has done here. Um, perhaps create a little daughter board that plugs across, probably across these two sockets, because you can pick up more or less all of the the um, connections you need. You need to remove some of these resistors up here, and some of the voltage lines that have to come out on the because there's um, if you look at uh, let me just go back um, let's find the right one if we scroll up a little bit there we go. this is the actual process of sock um, diagram here let me just see if I can find out yeah, here we go 
right there's the there's the more sort of compressed version of the thing but you can see you've got these pull up resistors to 12 volt they'd have to be removed as well but um, e even so I think it'd be an interesting mod so that might be one for later on down the line so as it stands at the moment um, this is what mine looks like and that's really what you're shooting for so what what I would suggest I mean, if you if you're building um, one of these boards and, and you haven't actually got a scope um, it might be worth using smaller values for the resistors what I did on mine I, I, I put the new resistors in and I, I left the, the um, lead sticking up about sort of 10 mil off the board so if I got it wrong I could just nip the top off and uh, solder across them so that <laughs> made things a little bit easier just to change it till I got it right but say so give it a go if you if you do have problems try r42 as 4.7k and r41 as seven and a half chances are that will probably work okay so so there you go i'll uh, see you next time